Hey there and welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll explore the world of monsters and mayhem in this sci-fi movie, Gantz. Oh, as always, there are major spoilers ahead, so viewers, beware. The movie opens with a live broadcast of Shibuya, or rather, what's left of it. Cars are ablaze, buildings are wrecked, people who have survived are medevaced immediately. The level of destruction is akin to a war zone. However, the cause of the chaos is still unknown. Somewhere in the city, a woman slowly regains consciousness. She opens her eyes only to see the city in a state of ruin, and an unknown creature is standing solely in the middle of it all. The woman slowly escapes from its line of sight, however, the monster notices this. It hurdles a literal car at her, but she is saved by a man in a high-tech motorbike. The man lunges at the monster and attacks it, gaining the upper hand for a brief moment. Just as the man reaches for his sword, the monster kicks him, breaking his sword in half, and sends the man flying onto the windshield of a car. The man, whose name is Kei Kirono, is met by the woman from before. She tries stopping him from attacking any further, but Kei tells her that someone has to do it. Kei moves to attack the monster, but unfortunately, it quickly gains control of the situation. The creature throws him around like a rag doll, but luckily for Kei, he manages to kill it before he passes away from his injuries. The woman, Rieka, mourns the death of her friend before she's taken away. We cut to a man walking in the streets of Osaka. The man, Masaru Kado, watches as an emergency message is broadcasted to its residents, and people immediately conclude that monsters will appear and destroy the city just like what happened in Shibuya. While waiting for the train, Kato rescues someone from a knife attack and passes away from his injuries. He wakes up in an empty room with several other people, including Rieka. An old man by the name of Yoshikazu Suzuki, who died from a heart attack, introduces himself. He also introduces Rieka, an idol who died from a car crash, Joe Kaironishi, and another unidentified man. Suzuki starts to explain that they've all died, but then this big sphere in the middle of the room suddenly talks. It explains that their lives have now all ended, and that it will decide how they'll live their new lives from now on. They have a new task, to finish of a man called Nurorihian, and to show him no mercy. Kato asks what the spear is and Suzuki tells him that the black orb is called Gantz. Gantz then opens its sides to reveal their suits and equipment they need for their mission. However, the unidentified man goes on an angry rampage and Nishi kills him instantly, saying he'll be a liability in the future. As it turns out, the people in this room are stuck playing an endless survival game, and their mission is to defeat the monsters just like the ones that appeared in Shibuya. As the group is transported out of the room, they re-emerge in Asaka to fight Yurorihian. In Asaka, a monster comes toward them, but Nishi immediately kills it. Suzuki explains the game to Kato. They have to find and kill the monsters in two hours or under, or else they all die. The Tokyo team meet up with the Asaka team after hordes of monsters appear in the area and run after them. As they get to know the Asaka team, they see that some players have exotic weapons with them. The Asaka team quickly clear out the monsters in the area. Meanwhile, Suzuki explains to Kato that players earn points with every kill. Players who score 100 points can use that to upgrade weapons, resurrect other teammates, or opt to be free from the game and have your memory erased. Nishi goes invisible to wait for the boss-level monster as the Asaka team continue killing the other monsters. Kato tries to join in the fight, but Suzuki and Rieka tell him not to fight monsters needlessly. However, Kato insists on saving the city's citizens. Suzuki gives him coins just in case he sees a payphone around and asks him to call someone dear to him. After a brief call with his little brother, Kato engages in a fight with a large monster. He eventually wins, and a member of the Asaka team, Yamasaki Anzu shows herself to Kato. She tells him she's been watching him and asks him what he's doing, because to her, it looks like he just saved a family from getting eaten by the monster. Kato says that that is exactly what he's done, and Anzu seems shocked. As Kato goes to save a young boy with two old people, his weapon gets destroyed. Anzu sees this and tries to help, but she misfires and gets trapped by the monster. After struggling for a bit, Kato succeeds in killing the monster and saving Anzu. Kato tells her that he was a student who was living with his younger brother after their parents had died. Anzu tells him she has a son, and that they're in a similar situation, meaning they both cannot afford to die. Meanwhile, news about heroes in black suits swarm the TV broadcasts. 
Elsewhere, Ri Iker reminisces Kei's last moments with Suzuki, when suddenly a huge monster emerges from the waters. Ri Ika and Suzuki try to run, but find themselves trapped between the creature and a large robot. Inside the thing is Hikairo Oka, who Anzu describes as a seven-time winner of the game. Hikairo battles the large monster as Ri Ika and Suzuki are confronted by soldiers. Just then, a winged monster appears and kills some of the soldiers, and Kato instructs Rieka to take Suzuki someplace safe. The winged beast turns its attention to Kato, and Anzu tries to distract it by throwing a bicycle at its head. Because of the distraction, Kato is able to incapacitate the beast, but only for a brief moment as it breaks out of its shackles. Nabayan and George, both members of the Asaka team, appear and shoot at the beast instantly. However, it's still not dead. The pair try to keep shooting at it, but it's too tough to beat. Eventually, the monster's head explodes, but not before it succeeds in killing Nabayan. Nurorihian appears, and Kato recognizes him as the boss. George attacks Nurorihian with his sword, but the monster seems unscathed. After a while, Nurorihian morphs into a giant woman and kills George while Kato and the rest of the team watch. Kato shakingly points his weapons at the shape-shifting Nurorihian just as it regurgitates Georgie's head. Rieka and Anzu try to help Kato, but all three are knocked down with one sweep of the monster's leg. The trio continue to fight it, but Kato notices a child left behind in the middle of the street. Just as he runs toward it, the women take a hit while covering for him. He manages to save them, but is grabbed at the last minute. Mishi appears in the nick of time and saves Kato from getting eaten alive. However, the winged beast from before reappears and has seemingly evolved into an even more monstrous form. Mishi loses his arm in trying to hit it, while Kato screams at all of them to run away. The team jump into the water for safety. Elsewhere, Hakairo's mecha and the overgrown monster engage in an epic battle across the city of Osaka. This battle is broadcasted on live TV, and the people watch as Hakairo takes down the massive beast but also loses his mecha in the process. A heavily injured and weaponless Hakairo now comes face to face with the boss. It takes blow after blow from Hakairo but quickly regenerates its limbs. It's Hakairo's turn to be beaten down as the monster continues its barrage of punches on Hakairo. It deals a final blow but Hikairo manages to remove his second suit just in time to drive a sword into the monster's belly. Kato and the rest of the gang ask if it's dead, and Hikairo tells them that for the monster to truly die, it must be taken by surprise. Hikairo goes to get more weapons and leaves Kato and the gang behind. Kato tries to finish off the monster, but before he can do it, the monster re-emerges as a ball of muscle from its previous body. Suzuki sees the threat and sacrifices himself in order for Kato to be unharmed. Suzuki is fatally injured, and the rest of the players realize that the monster has fully regenerated itself into a demonic form. Kato faces the thing head-on and throws a single punch, but is immediately knocked down after the creature retaliates. The monster leaves, and Kato, Anzu, and Rieka try to strategize how to win against the beast. Kato will offer himself as a decoy once it comes back, while Anzu and Rieka shoot at it from a distance, much to the chagrin of Anzu. While waiting for the monster to return, Anzu tells Kato that he means a lot to her and proposes that if they survive this, she and her son will live together with Kato and his brother. Kato agrees, though a little surprised at the sudden confession. The monster reappears behind Kato. He slowly turns around and sees the creature carrying the lifeless head of Hikairo. Now unsure what to do, Kato can only ask the creature why they're killing each other. The monster asks him if he can feel the power of God in its presence. Kato asks if it's God, and the monster says it is one of many. Just then, an attack from Anzu blows off its arm, much to its surprise. Rieka and Anzu continue firing at the monster from their respective vantage points, while the monster blindly shoots laser beams from its eyes. The laser hits Kato's legs, effectively maiming him. The beams also hit a nearby building, causing a billboard to fall on Rieka, injuring her shoulder. Meanwhile, Kato crawls for his weapon, while Rieka continues to distract the monster. However, it notices Kato from a distance and prepares to attack him, but then Anzu appears in front of him and boldly charges at the beast. The heroic act is short-lived as the monster unfortunately kills Anzu. Kato watches in despair as the monster focuses on him as its next target. Luckily, Mishi appears and slices through its body.
He gets hit, but Ryaka manages to take the monster's attention away from him. Kato points his weapon at it and deals the final blow to the creature before crawling towards Anzu's lifeless body. With nine minutes to spare, the players win the game and are transported back into the room. Gantz scores the players, and Kato gets 100 points for killing the boss. He's given the chance to pick his bonus, and he chooses to resurrect Anzu. She wakes up in her own room, alone. Kato leaves to go find his brother, while Rieka and Suzuki reveal that Kato used to be their previous teammate who already won the game. He chose to have his memory wiped and be freed from the game in order to return to his brother. Suzuki remarks that while they don't know how he got himself back in the game, he's still the same guy who'd risk his life to save others. That's the end of the movie. We hope you enjoyed this one, and if you did, make sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more movie recaps in the future. See you soon. Bye.